So the next thing we're going to talk about is calculating moment and center of mass. So um, center of mass is a very important concept, and it's essentially, I think of it as a balancing point. So if you had, say, a wrench, <laughs> and you're trying to balance it on your finger, right? You want to, you kind of move it around until the, you know, the mass on both sides is equal. And that point where it balances is its, is its center of mass in that dimension, right? It's in the dimension um, across the wrench or however you're trying to uh, uh, balance it. So, so I think of center of mass as kind of being the balancing point, but it, that really is, um, you know, um, it, <laughs> um, it's, it's essentially, that's essentially the, the center of gravity. But center of mass and center of gravity are related because um, obviously in most practical applications here on Earth, you know, you're working in a uniform gravitational field. And so the center of mass is the center of gravity. So, um, all right, let's take a look at this example. Now, this is actually example three, but I'm going to give you some background to get us, get us started to give you an idea of what, what, what we're doing here. <laughs> I don't want to just throw some, some uh, formulas at you and say, here, plug in the numbers. I want you to understand what you're doing. So um, imagine two children with two masses, M1 and M2, and they're some distance apart on a massless seesaw. Okay, so we're going to use some kind of ma theoretical massless seesaw. So essentially, they're a system of masses connected somehow. <laughs> in this case, it's a massless seesaw. So um, uh, there's something called Archimedes' Law of Lever, which says that um, the seesaw will balance if the mass 1 times its distance from the fulcrum is equal to mass 2 times its distance from the fulcrum. Okay, so let's use that to try to find out where the center of mass is. Now I'm calling in this diagram, you can see I'm calling the center of mass this x bar. So x with a line over it, okay? And that's, so that's the position of the center of mass. x1 and x2 are the positions of um, the two masses. So I can rewrite this as m1 times x bar minus x1, right? Because that's the distance from the center of mass to x1, right? And that's equal to m2 times the distance from the center of mass to x2, which in this case is going to be x2 minus x bar. Okay? Now let's rearrange that. I want to solve for x, the, x, the center of mass, x bar. Okay? So <laughs> I'm going to multiply through. This is supposed to be ma mass 1. Okay, so it's going to be m1 x bar minus oops, m1 x1 equals m2 x2 minus m2 x bar. And then let's move all the terms with this x bar over to one side, since that's what we're trying to solve for. So we're going to get m1 x bar plus m2 x bar is equal to m1 x1 plus m2 x2. And then I can factor out the x bar, right? So x bar times m1 plus m2 is equal to m1 x1 plus m2 x2. And then x bar then, which is a center of mass, so what we were trying to find, is equal to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 over the total mass, m1 plus m2, okay? So the numerator here, the numerator here is called the moment of mass. Okay, and the denominator here is um, obviously the total mass. Okay, so that's essentially how we find the center of mass is we take the moment of mass over the total mass. Okay, so let me scroll down here. And so in general, when we have a system of masses, where, you know, where we perhaps have more than one, more than two, I guess, you have n masses in a system. If we take um, 
the sum of all these moments, all right? So each one of these is a moment. M1 times X1 is the moment of M1 about the origin, all right? It's the distance from the origin, so it's the essentially the tendency of mass one to rotate the system about the origin, okay? And that's what all these are. M2 times X2 is the moment of mass two around the origin. So we add up all these moments, we get the total moment in the numerator, and then the denominator is just the total mass, and that's how we find the center of mass. All right, and um, and like I said, the, the, the um, the center of mass is very important in physics and engineering because effectively um, it's the point where we can consider all of the forces to be, you know, for particularly gravitation, um, to be acting on. Um, so, like, if you're looking at, like, and here we're showing a picture of a wrench, if you throw the wrench, right, that wrench is probably going to rotate and spin around in three-dimensional space but the center of mass will follow the parabolic trajectory that you would expect. So um, the center of mass is, is very important um, in, like I said, in, in uh, physics and engineering. So let's take, let's go back to those two children and now let's actually give them some masses. So if we have two uh, children with masses um, 20 kilograms and 40 kilograms, and let's say that they're three meter, meters apart on a massless seesaw, where should we put the fulcrum in order for um, them to balance? So let's draw our system of masses, okay? I'm just going to draw a number line. We'll call this zero. And um, I might as well put one of, the, one of these children at zero. Okay, I'm just going to measure everything from my point of reference and I'll just call the one end of the seesaw with um, and I'll call it this, we'll say the 20 kilogram child is at that point. Okay, now I, it doesn't matter where I put my reference point, but I, I'm just going to put it there. Let's <laughs> just put it at, right at the, right where the 20 kilogram child is sitting. And then um, the other child then is over here at three, right? And, and the other child weighs 40 kilograms. Okay, so now, what we need to do to find the center of mass is just find the moments of each of these masses of, uh, about the origin. In this case, I put the origin right at the place where the 20 kilogram child is sitting. So essentially the 20 kilogram child will have no moment around the origin. Okay. But then the 40 kilogram child will have 40 times three. That will be its moment around the origin. Okay, and then we want the total mass in the denominator, so 20 plus 40. So what do we get when we do that? So this first term is zero, right? So there's, so if, you know, if this 20 grand kilogram child is at the origin, then it's not going to rotate the system at all about the origin, right? So, um, so we end up anyway with this 40 kilogram child has does though have a moment around the origin. So it would have some sort of tendency to rotate this system about the origin. And so um, we got 120 when we calculate the numerator and the denominator is 60. So our center of mass is at two meters. And of course that's relative to where we put the origin, which is at zero, which is the end of, which is the end where the 20 kilogram child is sitting. So if we kind of draw some segments here, then we would want to put our fulcrum right here at two meters. So our um, center of mass is two meters from the end where the 20 kilogram child is sitting.